So we'll talk first about one of these things, angioinvasive fungal infection, um, a very serious um, uh, problem. In these, uh, just a few high yield points. Again, if you want more details, you can go into that paper, which I've cited here at the bottom uh, um, in archives uh, from 2019. So angioinvasive fungus usually occurs in immunosuppressed patients. Sometimes we see it in the setting of people that have been in a, a severe uh, motor vehicle accident or other severe trauma. Um, and it is a rapidly progressive infection that has a high mortality rate. What you see classically is fungal hyphae in the vessels, oftentimes with thrombus around them. And they also can uh, invade out of the vessels and into the dermis and associated acute ischemia like we just looked at uh, because the vessels are being blocked off by fungus and by fibrin, okay? An important note here is that fungal hyphae, you cannot reliably figure out the species just by looking at the, the histopathology slide. So on skin biopsy, you can't reliably figure out species of, of uh, hyphal fungal infections. On yeast, you sometimes can get closer to figuring out the species, but with hyphae, it's really hard. Um, and sometimes the treating physician team will pressure you to give a diagnosis of what species it is. And I will explain why you should uh, avoid doing that in a minute. So here's clinically what this can look like. This is a patient um, that had this, this, violet, or this uh, black, purple, um, uh, necrotic plaque you can see it's kind of making a blister here. It's got a lot of hemorrhage. It's began, uh, began to die and come kind of this uh, dusky grayish purple color in the center. And uh, this was near a catheter site and a biopsy of this showed angioinvasive fungus. So I'm gonna show you some other pictures in this talk that are gonna have some overlapping similarities. And it's because many of the things we're gonna talk about today are things that result in ischemia, which then leads to necrosis of the skin. So they can have some similarities. When I see a purpuric, violaceous, eschar, um, necrotic ulcer, any of those things, I always start looking for where is the vessel blocked. If I see a clinical picture like this, I wanna find a cause for um, occlusion of blood vessels because that's what I'm worried about as the primary thing. And that's what the dermatology team will be worried about as well, okay? And uh, that's, uh, that's what happened here. And this patient was neutropenic. Here's a, a different patient, not the one I just showed you, but this is a, a debridement specimen from a patient with angioinvasive fungus. And this is a good example of what a skin infarct looks like. And those big necrotic ulcers, the eschars, um, that's basically what they are. They're infarcts uh, that have associated hemorrhage. You can see at both sides of this ulceration, the epidermis and the skin's relatively normal. And then look what's happening here. The skin, even from low power, the skin's starting to get pale. You can tell the color of the epidermis here is different than the normal epidermis over here. It's because it's beginning to get necrotic. The nuclei are washing out and going away and it's becoming more pink. In the middle, the necrosis has been complete. The epidermis is totally gone and sloughed away. The dermis is bright pink and red because it's completely dead too. And underneath here, you see fat necrosis. And look at the shape of this infarct. Like other infarcts and other organs, it's a wedge shape. It has a narrow bottom, but it gets wider as it goes further away from the point of vascular blockage. So the occlusion, of course, is gonna happen down in these deeper, bigger vessels. And then you get that watershed effect where everything that branched off from those vessels is gonna lose blood flow and all of it's eventually gonna die. I'm doing hand gestures here in my office, but I realize that none of you can see them, but it still feels right, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Okay, here's a closer look. And you can see again, look at the normal epidermis over here on the right. Look over on the left, how the nuclei, a few are still left, but they're starting to go away. Again, it's so important to recognize this picture right here as this is in progress ischemia and the epidermis is dying because of it. Now, sometimes you can have that kind of necrosis happen in blister roofs from other causes. When a blister roof gets detached, like say in bolus pemphigoid that's longstanding, sometimes the roof of the blister will die because it's detached from the dermis, which is where its blood supply is. So you can see epidermal necrosis in other things that are not ischemic, but it is important to recognize that pattern because it's really, uh, really uh, uh, critical to see that. Um, again, here there's hemorrhage because this patient was also immune suppressed. And look, here's the cause right here. You can see we'll go in closer. And here's another vessel down here. They're totally filled with fungal hyphae. Look at all those hyphae. You can see them here even on H&E. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to do special stains to recognize them. And when there's clinical concern for angioinvasive fungus, and I don't see any obvious fungus on the biopsy, I'll usually still do uh, both PAS and GMS. I do both because sometimes the fun fungi, particularly if the patient has received antifungal therapies, sometimes they don't stain 
uh, very well with one of the stains. So I like to have both stains and I'll do deeper sections in hopes that I'll cut into an area that might have fungus. Because again, I would rather do overkill to try to find this than miss it because missing it is potentially fatal. The eccrine glands here, the coils, are not totally dead, but they don't look super happy, do they? See how they're getting vacuolated and they're starting to break down a little bit? They don't really like this ischemia. These are probably still alive because they're at the edge of the infarct where they're probably still getting a little bit of blood from that adjacent portion of the dermis. And if you're, if you're looking here, not only are the fungi in here, but look at that. There's hyphae everywhere in the background dermis. Complete invasion of the dermis, not a bit of inflammation, again, because this patient had a very, very low white count, so they weren't able to mount any immune response to the fungal infection. So when I see this really wiped out pink dermis with hemorrhage in a neutropenic or immunosuppressed patient, particularly like a bone marrow transplant patient, instantly I start worrying about fungal infection because it often is this wiped out pink look because there's no inflammation. And we're used to, as pathologists, we're used to seeing invasive fungus or other types of infectious processes with a bunch of inflammation with abscess and granuloma, but you're not going to have that, that stuff in a patient that's immunocompromised severely. Here's a closer look at another vessel. Again, look at the hyphae. You can see them outlined and silhouetted here because there's fibrin filling up the space in between. Um, and then here's an eccrine coil that's necrotic. And you can see there's actually fungal invasion into the eccrine coil that's dead. Here's a look actually from the same case, but way deep down in the subcutis. And you can see the fungi here look actually different. They actually have some purple color to them. So sometimes fungi are totally clear and visible on H&E. Sometimes you can see their pink, thick fungal wall. And then sometimes you can actually see some purple stuff in the middle, which I assume is kind of like the cytoplasm of the fungus. I don't really know, maybe one of my, um, Friends with mycology expertise can fill me in on that. But again, this is an H&E stain, the same section as the pictures I just showed you. And you can see the fungus here filling up the vessel and growing through the wall and out into the surrounding collagen. So you may say that the fungal hyphae here look kind of ribbon-like and, and kind of more like a zygomycosis uh, a grouping of fungus, the you know mucor, absidia, rhizopus. And if you look back here, you can see actually there's acute angle branching. And there's even, if you look, closely some, um, some uh, septation in the hyphae. And in fact, this patient cultured out two different organisms. They had aspergillus and also mucor, both growing there. So I don't know for sure, but I bet this is the mucor in the previous picture is probably the aspergillus. So the only way we know that though is because they actually cultured the patient and were able to get a result. Let's look at a different case. And this is one from early in my practice. And this is a time where I learned an important lesson that I'm now gonna share with you. This is a great example of a punch biopsy at the edge of one of those violaceous eschars like I showed you clinically earlier. They punched it right at the edge. And you can see this portion on the left here is part of the wedge of infarct. It's completely dead, pink, wiped out death of the skin. Over on the right, the skin is still alive, although probably not very happy. It looks very abnormal in here. And here at the edge of this zone of infarct was some inflammation and also at closer look, fungi. And so the fungal hyphae here, uh, this is a PIS stain, they look to me very ribbon-like, dilated, kind of obtuse, broad branching, the kind of morphology that you're supposed to see in mucor, rhizopus, and absidia. So I would al was always taught during my training uh, in fellowship to not provide a fungal species, even if the clinical team pushes you. But the clinical team in this case, the, the transplant team, they were really like, well, just give us an idea. What do you think? And I said, well, okay. I said, I don't know for sure, but I think it looks more like mucor obsidia rhizopus. You still have to culture it to be sure, but I, I really don't think it looks like aspergillus or fusarium or one of those acute angle septated fungi. Guess what this thing grew out on culture? Aspergillus niger. And actually, in retrospect, if you look, there are a few little septations here. But the thing is that this patient, they already knew that the patient probably had fungal infection. They were clinically suspicious. They had been treating the patient with systemic antifungal agents. And that can sometimes alter the morphology of the fungus. So patients that are really sick, they often are on, a, on antibiotics, antifungals, a lot of stuff because the clinical team is worried about infection. So by the time you get the biopsy, they may have been on antifungals already, and that can distort the morphology of the fungus. The other thing is that the fungal hyphae um, descriptions that we always classically learn, those are based on cultured 
uh, on uh, mycology culture dish growth of fungi, okay? The way that fung fungi grow and look in tissue on an H&E or on a, a special stain of a paraffin embedded formal and fixed tissue biopsy can be different, okay? So I urge you to be cautious with this um, and, and always guide the clinical team that they need to do cultures or in, in some cases they can do molecular studies to identify the species. And here's a great paper from the American Journal of Clinical Pathology that I really love and I recommend you all to, to keep this tucked away in your useful files. And it basically goes through and looks at fungi and says, look, you can't reliably identify them on, on um, tissue biopsy, okay? So this is now what I cite when, when I get pushback from a clinical team about, well, come on, just give us the, the you know, just give us the uh, species of the fungus. I tell them, well, here's what the literature says. So that always helps. And here's an example, a sample report of what I would say, something like this, angioinvasive fungal infection, and I explain what it looks like, and then I put a line in here that you gotta correlate with microbial cultures or molecular analysis if they need to know the species for clinical management of the patient. And, um, uh, and I cite that, that paper. And then of course, I make sure that I, that I report the findings or discuss the findings with someone from the treating team, because again, this is an urgent diagnosis. This is a more urgent thing than melanoma or most skin cancers, okay? This is something that needs the, the team needs to know about now, today. So really important to, to keep an eye out for those. And you know, when I have to come in on a weekend to do a, a rush case, some people say, well, derm path, there's never any emergencies. But as you're gonna learn in this lecture, there are sometimes, and this is one of the more common things I come in for on a weekend um, to have to look at a rush biopsy because it can't wait till Monday.